Hello again, everybody, and welcome to The Warrior Report here on HBC TV 25. I'm Justin Barrientos. Thank you for joining us here today. We are brought to you by Russell and Associates and coming to you from the 111 Riverfront Building, the Latch Development Center in downtown Winona. And we're going to start off by talking men's basketball with head coach Todd Eisner. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, the Wayne State game. Unfortunately, a loss in that one, 81-72. Uh, tell us a little bit about your thoughts on that. Yeah, unfortunately, Justin, I'm you know getting down here each week and pushing play on the things that we talked about the week before, and um, you know we really, really struggled offensively in the first half and, and defended pretty well. Uh, Wayne State shot 40% in the first half, and we forced them into nine turnovers, and and that gave us a chance. I mean, we were down one at the half, and we talked to the guys at halftime. You know, we felt really good if we could hold them to 40% again in the second half, we'd probably win the game because we didn't believe we'd be just as bad offensively. And uh, we did clean up some things offensively in the second half, but they came out, they hit their first six threes. I think they were seven of their first eight from the three. And, you know, their best players uh, showed why they're really good players. And we had a hard time stopping Jansen and Egan's and Nate Moore. And, um, you know, and we just didn't do enough on, on either end of the floor uh, to, to pull out what would have been a really good road, uh, road win. But Wayne State's very good, and you're going to have to play at a high level to beat them. I think you have like a, a bright shining light somewhere. James Kelly played really well this weekend yeah. in both games. That tell us a little bit of what you saw from him. Yeah, James brings an element that we need. You know, we're you know I've mentioned it. We're not very athletic. Uh, we don't score near the rim very well, and he brings those dimensions to our team. Um, you know, the the transition from uh, James played junior college for two years, and then he, he played at another Division two school um, his third year, and uh, I, I think. You know, he would be able to answer it better, but I think it's been a tough transition. We demand a lot of our guys in terms of attention to detail and, and, and a work ethic on a day-to-day -day basis that allows you to earn opportunities to play in games. And, um, you know, we're just at a point right now, unfortunately, where the things he brings to the table, uh, we've got to have on the floor. Mm -hmm. And so I've started to use him a little bit more. Um, he was very good both days. He, he really does have an ability to score near the rim, even versus size. Uh, and then he just gives us some length and some athleticism on the glass uh, that we desperately need. And so, uh, yeah, he was very good both nights, played well at Wayne. He uh, was probably the only guy that played pretty well at Wayne and then uh, um, carried that over to a really big night on uh, Sunday over at uh, Augustana. Yeah, and, and also playing well against Augustana was Luke Martins, yeah. uh, who you wanted to get back into the offense and get back into the groove, and, and he did so this weekend. Yeah, he really did. I mean, Luke's got about you know two or three games every year where he's – He's really the X factor, and um, you know, a couple of years ago over at Mankato, when we won at Mankato, I think he was like seven of seven or eight for eight from the floor, and he had a very similar night. He really took over for us in the second half. Uh, you know, there was a timeout, I think, at the 15-minute mark of the second half, where we were down already, like 14 or 16, and he let his teammates have it, and uh, I didn't have to say much. And then he not only let them have it, but then he led, and I thought it was a really big jolt for our team, and. He played tremendous on both ends of the floor. He made 12 rebounds, five on the offensive end, made big shots for us. Uh, we were joking with him. I mean, he had the gamut of three-point shots. He had an air ball. He hit one that uh, he shot one that landed in the crotch of the of the basket for a dead ball. Okay. He hit a banked three from almost the corner, and then he swished our game winner. And so he, uh, it's not even the trifecta. It was like the quadruple of three-point shots. But he was. Him and James carried us. Uh, uh, Owen was really gutty. Owen's really dealing with an Achilles issue, and um, you know he didn't score it uh, great for us, but gave us great leadership. And um, you know, so it was it was a great comeback win for us, and it was a much needed win. I want to ask you about having players that that will that aren't afraid to talk to the other players and just say, "Hey, we need to step things up," because obviously you can yell and scream yeah. as much as you want, but unless the team is buying in on it, unless somebody else on the team is buying in on it. Maybe that doesn't mean as much, but but the players themselves. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to have somebody that will get on another. Yeah, team. I mean, if you if you talk to you know coaches and the gurus in the coaching profession and in the business world, I mean, people talk to you all the time. You know, coach led teams can be good, player led teams can be great, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to have the respect to your teammates. You know, I mean, I got our guys really good at half. The most I've gotten on to them uh, at all this year, uh, just kind of let loose and. And we went from down seven to down 18. So they didn't listen to me at all, you know. And so, uh, you know, Luke's, Luke's influence was very impactful. Um, but then, again, on the flip side, you've got to have the respect of your teammates where they will actually absorb the message and buy in. And that's becoming harder and harder in this day and age. Uh, young people don't want to be told what to do or how to do things, whether it's coming from me as an adult or from their peers. 
And so uh, for Luke to have that impact was really impressive. Let's talk about the resiliency then of coming down from 18, because we've seen that a lot in, in not only your team, but other teams, NFL, whatever. We, there, there's these huge deficits uh, lately that happen, yeah. and teams are able to claw back. What did you see in your team that was able to get them able to claw back from yeah. the team? Are you referencing the Vikings by chance? Because I, 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 I wouldn't, yes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yes. care for that reference at all in any way, <laughs> shape, or form. Um, but, but, but very impressive, yes, obviously. Thank you. Uh, but no, I mean it's the second time our guys have done it, and that's what I, I uh, referenced to after the game. I, you know, we did that against Purdue Northwest the second weekend of the year. We were down 13 at the half and playing really poorly, and and found a way to win. And, you know, this didn't look good. I mean, like I said, I think we were down seven at the half and shot 25% from the floor again in the first half. And you're just pulling your hair out as to how we can be so, you know, poor offensively. Um, but we had guarded okay. And then we come out the second half and let them do whatever they want offensively and, you know, get the 18 point hole. And, uh, but we were much better offensively again. We shot 58% the second half, uh, made some good adjustments. Guys got downhill, finished some plays. Still not doing great from the arc. I think we were eight for 28 for the game. Um, but they fought, and uh, you know I live with a lot of things um, and results even. Um, but I want us to be fighters, and I didn't think we had that same mentality uh, in the Southwest Sioux Falls weekend. I mean, we were okay, uh, but we just let our offense impact our defense too much. And once Augie got to like I said that 15-minute timeout of the second half, and they had expanded the lead, um, and we didn't guard anybody that first five minutes. We guarded the rest of the game, really, and. Uh, and so we combined that, and there we are. We shot 58% from the floor, and we defended, and that allows you to get back into a, a game that you were down 18. I imagine that this Augustana game would be one that you want to kind of build on, but now you've come to break. Yeah. And uh, so what does break look like for you? What does break look like for the team? Yeah, I mean, so the guys all went home on Monday. Um, NCAA mandates that you have a seven-day break at Christmas. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, I'm not one of those guys that needs to practice every day, but seven days is too long. Uh, you know, it just puts our guys out of rhythm. Um, you know, too many of them may not have access to a gym or a weight room. And uh, so it just makes it challenging to keep them in the shape that we need to keep them in and keep their skills at the level we need to keep them at. Um, so they're on a seven day break, actually an eight day break right now, counting Monday. We'll get back on the 27th and practice twice. Then the holiday tournament's at our place. So we've got to kind of maneuver and manipulate practice a little bit before we get to Upper Iowa on the 31st. Um, for us, it's a great time to go recruiting, but the weather doesn't look like it's going to cooperate. Uh, we'll be at a game tonight here locally, and then I was hoping to be in Madison Thursday, Chicago Friday, but it doesn't look great right now. So we'll have to maybe adjust possibly or, or maybe not do anything. And then you can get back into the office and maybe just review film. Uh, but at this time of the year, typically, it's a great opportunity to get out and see a lot of high school games. Yeah, definitely. And uh, unfortunately, you might not be able to do that, like you said. Um, we only have a few minutes left in this segment. And uh, since the players are on break, we don't have player guests here yeah. today. But I wanted to talk to you and talk to you about your playing career yeah. because we never had a real chance to do sure. that. We have mentioned before that you went to Creighton yeah. Division I. Uh, tell us a little bit, if you can remember, um, how you decided Creighton, yeah. uh, what the recruiting process was like when, when you were playing, because I think you're a freshman in the 86, 87 right, season. Right, It's a long time ago. Recruiting was a lot different. Uh, so I played for my dad in high school, a uh, small town in eastern Wisconsin near Green Bay, in between Green Bay and Milwaukee. And so it was a great experience, and we were fortunate to win a state championship. And uh, when your dad's your coach, you get to shoot a lot. And so I put up uh, you know, pretty impressive numbers, I guess. And uh, so uh, at that time, you had to be invited to two national camps. Uh, as opposed to all the AAU tournaments, there weren't AAU tournaments, and I got invited to those camps. And uh, you know, early on, I was recruited really heavily, and that's what you found out about the recruiting process at that time. So, I mean, I my junior year, I had Iowa, Iowa State, Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Marquette, Syracuse, Stanford, you know, right on down the line in my gym, either at practice or games, and things were you know looking pretty good. And then uh, I went to those camps and got destroyed. And I played pretty good at one camp. The other camp, I got destroyed. And played uh, played against a lot of guys that you know were NBA draft picks and played in the NBA and I wasn't an NBA player and, and so it didn't go well and you found out real quickly how the recruiting process worked because I really never heard from any of those schools ever again. Uh, but Creighton liked what they saw. A few other schools liked what they saw. You know I always wanted to go to either Wisconsin or Marquette growing up in Wisconsin and you know they wanted to wait and see how my senior year went, which we found out meant basically that they had other priorities and if they didn't get those priorities they would come back to you and so I went to Creighton and. Uh, I was in Coach Baroni's first recruiting class, and so he was, you know, selling that we were going to build this around these first two recruiting classes, which everything he talked about came true. Um, you know, we weren't very good as, as freshmen, but we got a chance to play. 
Um, I ran into some injury things. I was playing really well going into my sophomore year and tore my ACL. Uh, missed that year, came back the third year. Uh, we won the Missouri Valley Conference Championship, played the NCAA tournament, um, and uh, led the Missouri Valley Conference in three-point shooting, which is weird because we didn't have a three-pointer in high school. Right. And I tell my guys, I just told them this on, on Sunday at Augustana, as we don't, we're not, I went 0 for 19 in the Valley play from the three my freshman year. So, you know, it, it just shows, again, at the end of the day, you got to put the time in to be good at something. And I had a lot of time because I tore my ACL, so I had a year and a half um, once I got back to, you know, kind of refine my skills and led the Valley in three-point shooting, and we won the tournament. And then I get to my fourth year, tear my other ACL. Mm. And, uh, and that one was bad. I still deal with it today and, um, and uh, missed most of that year. It was in the ninth game. Did it out in Hawaii, of all places, playing <laughs> in a game. And, and uh, so my fifth year, I really struggled, just health-wise. I had a hard time practicing and kind of saved me for games. And so I ended up being a, a role player. And so I played about three plus years, a little bit over three years. And, uh, but we won the Valley Championship again my senior year. Played with two great post players that uh, one was the first pick of the Phoenix Suns and the other one played overseas for 12 years and made a lot of money and, and then we just put kind of shooters around the arc and if they were open you threw it to them and that was your you know, that was your directive and if you if they were guarded then you should have to shoot the ball and uh, we won the Valley, won the tournament, uh, got to the NCAA tournament, we won a first round game against New Mexico State and lost to Seton Hall in the second round and uh, with my health I haven't played basketball 10 days since then. You know I just, uh, my body has not handled uh, the wear and tear of those five years very well. And so I'm 55 going on 80, but I'm still good enough to play a little bad golf. And uh, <laughs> that's all I need right now. Was that uh, PJ Calissimo seat yeah, ball uh, yeah, back then? Yeah. What was so, it like to play against them? It was them? great. You know, they had Terry DeHair and Anthony Avent, two NBA first round draft picks on their team. And I actually hit a three at the horn at the half to go up one. And then those two said, we're done dealing with you guys. And I think we lost 81-69, I think, in the second round. And uh, they showed why they were going to be NBA first-round draft picks in that second half. What was it like to play in the NCAA tournament at that time? Because that's when the brackets started coming yeah. out and people started getting interested in yeah. not only a championship, but also all the other games in the tournament. Design. Yeah, it was awesome. The first one in 89, we played in Dallas against Missouri. Missouri had four NBA first round draft picks in their starting lineup. Um, and we, we led at the half. They had a half court shot at the buzzer to cut it to three. Um, and we played really well that game. But again, just their talent took over in the second half. And then senior year, um, it's just a cool deal. They treat you, you know, so well and it makes you feel really special. Um, you know, from everything, your hotel accommodations, your travel, the per diem, the meal money. It's just like, you know, and this is 1990. It was just crazy. All of a sudden they hand you this cash and like, what's this? this is your meal money for today? And that was like our meal money for a week, you know, <laughs> when we were playing in the regular season. So, um, and it's only blown up incrementally in the last 30 years. So, um, you know, it, the game of college basketball is very strong financially and, and the players are now finally getting rewarded for a lot of that. Yeah, very good. Well, we're out of time for this segment. I feel like we keep going forever uh, on this, and, and maybe sometime down the line uh, we will keep on going. Sure. But, but thank you for uh, revisiting your, your college days. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. Like I said, uh, it was a great experience. I would do it all over again, including the injuries, to have uh, you know one more day to play. Very good. All right. Well, uh, congratulations on all that, and uh, we'll see you after the break. All right, Justin. Thanks. All right. Thank you. We're going to take a break here on the Warrior Report. When we come back, we'll talk women's basketball with head coach Anna Words right after this. Here on HBC TV 25, we're brought to you by Russell and Associates and coming to you from the 111 Riverfront Building, the Latch Development Center in downtown Winona. Tend now to talk women's basketball with head coach Anna Wirtz. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of losses this weekend. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Wayne State game and how you thought your team played. Yeah, I mean, competed right there. We're right there. Um, and we knew that. We knew that would be a, a game that we could get. Um, and really wanted to get, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it came down to the, to the end. We had multiple opportunities, had some some good looks, and just couldn't quite 
get it over the top. <laughs> <laughs> tied at halftime, tied at the end of the third quarter, yep. and then the fourth quarter. Uh, what happened in the fourth quarter? It was a little back and forth. Um, yeah, I mean, we had the lead with four minutes to go, and they ended up calling a, a play on kind of a moving screen, and then gave them the basket as well. So it was a three-point play, take the ball out of bounds, and get another bucket. So that was a five-point play, basically, in 10 seconds or less. Um, kind of a uh, momentum shifter there, I felt like, but um, yeah, they took the lead, but we still had an opportunity again. We had we were down one and had a had a layup opportunity and just didn't finish, and had down three and had a couple open looks at threes. You know, um, you know, right there. <laughs> yeah. So, so what are you learning from from these losses? Oh, a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, I think just in general, it's it's NSIC basketball, and that's tough. It's <laughs> tough to come out with wins every single night. Yeah. Um, I'd say that's kind of the biggest thing. Um, so we got to learn how to finish how to finish games um, at this level, and I also learn that we're in a position where we, we can. You know, we're we're getting the looks. We're, um, you know, that's the biggest thing as a coach. You just are we getting the right shot opportunities for the right people and. That's always my, you know, first look at the film when I go back is, um, you know, who got which shots and where, and is that the shots that we want at that time? And, and I do think so. I think we're right there. Um, so, lots to learn. Um, we got better. We rebounded better this weekend mm -hmm. um, than we had been. Um, so that's kind of something that we're starting to hopefully see a more consistent shift in. Um, yeah. So. All right. Uh, against Augustana, uh, you had three players that got to double-digit points. But unfortunately, you lost that one, seventy three fifty seven. Tell us a little bit about how you thought against Augustana. Yeah, again, I was a tricky game because of what they do. Um, you know, since I've been here, um, that's a long time. <laughs> um, but they do the same thing, and it, it, we we have struggled with their press sometimes here and there. But they got out of it within the first five minutes. We we took care of that. We got open looks for shooters on the backside or. Uh, shots at the rim and they ended up having to adjust to you know something that we were doing which is a good sign for for uh, I guess where we're at but um, yeah it just just not quite enough again um, we ran a zone defense um, that I felt like you know we kind of went from a prospect to the zone which is uh, something we hadn't really tried but felt like the matchup um, at the rim wasn't necessarily in our favor so I went with a little something different and um, but unfortunately, lost shooters in the zone a little bit too much. Um, but again, they got two offensive rebounds um, in that entire game, which is impressive. Um, you know, and they had 20 plus missed threes. So I mean, they, they had opportunities they could have. So we controlled that. But yeah, it's just not quite not quite enough right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, Alex Dornfeld is having uh, continued to have a good season. Uh, yeah. 17 against Wayne State and uh, 15 against. Uh, Augustana, tell us about uh, what you've seen in Alex now. Yeah, I mean, it's just consistent, you know, it's, it's awesome because we know what we're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's always in coaching, you just are waiting for players to just be like, okay, what what type of player are you, um, what can you get done on the basketball floor, and she's proven now that she's, you know, she's going to get us 10 rebounds a game, which is absolutely needed. Mm -hmm. um, we rely on her a lot for that, hopefully a little less coming up, but um, and then learning how to score in multiple ways. You know, she started off the season posting up and, and looking to finish there, and now she, you know, she can knock down the open three, and she drove a little bit in that Augie game. And um, so, yeah, she's, she's really just spreading her game and uh, learning how to, how, to, how to score in different ways, which is awesome. All right. Uh, how are you feeling about your bench and what the contribution is from your bench in these games? Yeah. Um, I mean, good. I think where we're at right now is we're all – just kind of, uh, we're the same. We're really solid, you know, but we're just waiting. So it's just anyone we pull off the bench, they're solid. I mean, we, I think they're right in the mix there with our starting rotation. Um, but that's where I think we're still needing is some a little bit more clear cut, you know, who's our who's our go-to players when the time, it's crunch time and we need a bucket. Um, where are we gonna go and how are we gonna get that? Um, but I mean, yeah, we've got, and honestly, you haven't seen kind of more people, like we probably could get some more people in the rotation. I think that's where we're at right now, though, is, is just um, pretty solid across the board, just waiting for that standout um, moment for, for, other, for others, you know, like, like we just talked about with Alex. Sure. Uh, so it's break time right now. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't have another game until New Year's Eve, which is an interesting uh, night to have a game. Um, so what does break, like, break look like for you in your first year as a head coach? 
Um, I think Coach and I, Coach Ballard and I were always on the same page with break. Um, he wanted it, I need it, we need it, <laughs> and the players need it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think that we're – anything's really different. As much time as I can give them, I try to give them. Um, it, but it is an emphasis on, you know, you're home and you've got to – uh, be preparing. Um, we're obviously not exactly where we want to be right now, so these next seven days are crucial. Um, we need them to f get a fresh start and restart, but we also need to get better. <laughs> so there's there's got to be a balance there. They've got to find time in the gym, but we, we trust that they're going to do that. Um, that's all part of the recruiting process is at the Division two level. We need to know that one, in the summers, we don't have them. Are you going to go home and put in work? And then, two, it's Christmas break. You get a full-on week in the middle and the heart of our season. Um, so we've got to trust that we've got players in our program that are going to put in some work without us uh, watching over them. So you haven't uh, put up any kind of like uh, workout routine? or, or... Absolutely. I was actually just sending that um, right before <laughs> I got here. Um, and they ask for that. They want that. Sure. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we'll do – some sort of conditioning something they know that the practices are typically a little harder when they get back because we need them to have that in the back of their minds that um it's you're not going to walk in and practice isn't going to be easy so we you know, I need you to make sure that you're in shape when you return i mean we've got a game in what four days as soon as they get back so it's not much time to get back in shape they've got to be doing that on their own and when you come back from break you you head out to Fayette, and it's going to be interesting now because this is the last time that you have to go to Fayette yeah. because we just found out that Upper Iowa is leaving the conference at the right. end of the year. So what is that like to, to be facing a team that you know won't be here next year? That is true. Um, honestly, I'm trying to get them on the schedule yet, so <laughs> okay. I, I hope that we can. It's At the Division two level, I mean, look around. It's really hard to find E2 games that you can travel two hours and, and get that, so hopefully that's a yeah, something we can come to an agreement on um, and, and do that still moving forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, heading to Fayette, it's, it's an interesting environment. It's um, different. You can see a lot of teams don't come out um, super like, well when you head to Fayette. It's a different a different place. And um, yeah, so but I think right now, the, we're pretty motivated right now. Uh, we've It's not like we're sitting exactly where we want to be, so I don't think that it should be an issue. Um, I think we're going to be ready to get to work and then excited for that game. I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back and, and talk a little bit about your playing career since uh, we have some time here and it's the holidays. No no players to talk to, so we need to talk uh, about something else here. And uh, obviously, I've been able to follow your whole career, which yeah. has been uh, really interesting and, and really fun to do that. But looking back on your career, are, are there some moments that you say are a little bit more special than, than some others? That's just it. I, I'm like kind of the wrong person to have when it comes <laughs> to talk about my career because I don't remember things very well. And my career is one of them. Um, I go blank. Um, honestly, it's just the people. Like, that's where we're at now. You know, I've got a group of people from my blank days that we still talk every day, um, a group chat, and now it's, it's not about basketball anymore. It's about kids and babies and um, daycare and <laughs> all the illnesses that all of our kids are going through every week. Um, so it's just times have changed. But as far as my playing career, I mean, I remember being happy. I remember loving it, but I don't remember specific moments that well um, on the court. Um, I do remember stuff on the buses and um, traveling. You know, we, made, we had a California trip that was a trip of a lifetime. Um, I knew we we were good. I remember enjoying that. I just don't really remember the specific specific things. You probably get some of my other friends. They could probably rattle off more for <laughs> you. <laughs> so, uh, tell me a little bit about what it was like for Coach Ballard because I think he was a couple years into uh, being the Winona State head coach when you came along. Yeah. What was it like during your playing career and then? towards your, your coaching career. Uh, yep. did, did he change at all, or was he kind of the same and constant? Um, he's pretty constant. He is who he is. <laughs> it's an everyday thing. Um, I think that's one of the most impressive things about that man is just his consistency on every day. There is no highs, no lows. He is just steady. Um, he's Yeah, he just shows up, and he is the same person. You would never know whether he's going through anything in his life like we all are at times. Um, he has never shown that. He's... About as consistent as they get. The one thing I'd say learning is like how calculated he is when it came to like how he'd get upset 
Because, you know, we would see that as players and we would, you know, obviously we'd react to that if, if coach was mad about the way we played or, or something that we did. But, you know, behind the doors, like, I mean, I'd watch him and we'd walk, before we walk in, he'd be like, just wait, watch this. And then he'd all of a sudden like turn on this switch of like anger or frustration and just to know that that's what was happening before he came into the locker room um, to, uh, to get after us. You know, he was just like smiling, laughing out with us, us as a coaching staff and then he can walk through the door and just turn on this different switch and then walk out the door that's probably the most impressive and then just give us like high fives like <laughs> um yeah so he's just yeah he's a one of a kind man. Oh. all right uh I, I do want to go back to a couple points uh in your playing career and, and one is the fact that uh you are still the all-time record holder in three-pointers made at Winona State yep. what does something like that mean to you oh man I mean, I feel like I got really lucky. I just think about that and I look at, the, I mean, I, our players right now, I hope somebody breaks it and right now would be fantastic. <laughs> we could use, we could use it. Um, but it, it didn't. And from the day that I stepped on campus, I had uh, Molly Anderson, now Casper, we're scrimmaging and she looked at me and I passed up some open shots and she said, she yelled at me and she just said, Coach Ballard told me you could shoot, so when I pass you the ball, you're going to shoot. <laughs> um, and just something like in that moment, I guess when you think about memories, like that's one of mine, but that's not a memory for me, that's for her and how special of a leader um, we had in her. And um, so it's just that sort of thing. I think we have a lot of great shooters throughout our program, but there's so much more behind the scenes that goes into it. You got to have the confidence and, and believe that you can hit it. And and I had a lot of people around me at that time that just didn't give me any other option. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I would say it's it really isn't me. I mean, and then you think it's Coach Ballard. He, he ran a lot of we ran a lot of plays then, a lot of sets, but a lot of them, it worked for me. Um, I was setting, you know, screens for a post player um, who was really dominant, and we had multiple of those. Um, you know, we had Jamie Majerowitz, and then we had... Michelle McDonald following, um, I mean, you name it, Natalie Giggler, um, Bonnie Bjork, we just had, so in that sense, I'm setting a screen for them, they have to help, and then I pop up open. I mean, that was really the, the key to, to a lot of those open looks um, back at that time, and it all started with, you know, they have to respect the person in front of me in order to, in order for me to get open, so yeah, it just, everything kind of worked its way to, uh, to that, I would say. <laughs> All right, uh, just a couple minutes left, and I, I want to go back to uh, tournament and, and playoff time, because mm -hmm. uh, one of the interesting stats about you is that besides Coach Ballard, you are the only other person that was involved in all of the trips yeah. that Winona State women have made to the NCAA tournament. Can you think back to 2009 yeah. and tell us about that first trip uh, to the oh, tournament man. and what that was like? Amazing. Um, yeah, but again, awful with my memory. <laughs> um, uh, I remember sitting in the locker room after we lost and I just remember um, just that moment where it was, we knew that it was the finality of, of that group of people that were together for, for years there just sticking together and really kind of accomplishing that next goal that we had all set out to do and kind of changing the, the program and the expectations for what Winona State basketball is. And um, so I do remember the end of the locker room there and being there. Um, I mean, I, I remember the very end of the game, the game that we lost, um, it came down to the wire and, um, you know, we, we lost in overtime. So it was a, it's a tough finish and then Mankato went on and won that. We would have had another another shot at them had we have broke through there. But um, yeah, that was a, it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are out of time here, but uh, I thank you for uh, coming on here and uh, reliving a little bit of your uh, Winona State history. Uh, it's obviously a great history to pull from. And uh, we've been glad to be a part of uh, all the history that you've had. That's awesome. Thank uh, you. HBC. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for being part of it. Oh, no problem. Thank you. And uh, good luck when you get back uh, on the court to, in just at the end of December against yes. Upper Iowa. Thank you. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us here on the Warrior Report. And uh, we will see you next year here on HBC TV 25.